I might hit better the gravel. I tell you what, though, it's been pretty good defense by Virginia Tech in their shoot around today. That's all they worked on, being able to deny or at least follow JJ Reddick and have a guy's hand in his face. King made a great play just to catch that tough pass from Collin, and then he draws the foul. The shot wouldn't fall for him. But right here, just a little tight end screen for Jeff King, starting tight end on the Virginia Tech football team. And then he uses his strength to muscle it up, take the hit, get the ball up on the rim. Javlik Randolph picks up the free throw for Jeff King. That was his third free throw made this year out of five tries. He just hasn't had that many minutes. He's getting more as the season wears on. You got a body like that, you know, you're a contact magnet. I wouldn't know. <laughs> 24-22, Hokies on top by a pair. That was ill-advised, but nevertheless, he's playing with confidence on both ends, you know, doing what he can to fulfill his role. Now you got two receivers playing each other, Love and King. Sheldon Williams got good position, but against the double team, couldn't hit the shot, and he was the last to touch it underneath. And it's out for the Hokies. Roving around the court, when Williams gets the ball down low, Washington's coming over, really trying for the block as Collins starts to hold his position. And that's when things get dangerous when you get a guy like that flying through the air. Four on Deron Washington, the freshman from New Orleans. And King, the tight end on the football team, will come back in to join Collins up front. King is really their only size off the bench, their only bulk. Got a 6'11 freshman down there, but he doesn't provide any big shoulders or big backside for him. Duke by three. Foul away from the ball. This is going to be on King. Guys exchanging elbows and picking up fouls. Well, again, the added dimension this year, J.J. Reddick's ability to get to the basket, he just leaves the defender behind. You know, deceptively quick. You can tell how hard he has worked, not only with his left hand dribble, but shooting it with his left hand. He's just become a complete player. King! How about that? The tight end goes out to about 19 feet and drains one. And the message that he sent was, you better play me. Sheldon Williams, you can't camp in that lane. You better come out and play me. King, a 30% shooter with limited opportunities on the year. Ewing gets inside the line and knocks it down. Both teams starting to heat up from the perimeter. Ewing has 11. Here's a block from behind and a foul before the block. We've got a timeout on the court. 15, 54 to go. Duke has extended his lead to five, but Coleman Collins has done his darndest to keep Virginia Tech in this game. The sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, with his first double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds, only one off of his career high, and that spectacular pass. He's only 18 years old, played as a freshman last year, was tough down the stretch as a 17-year-old. Mike, he missed some games early in the season. He had did. to get a cyst removed from his foot. Came back December 27th. And in those last 12 games, he's averaged 13.7 rebounds. And it's really been a mainstay on the defensive end. They need a basket here. That's a good defensive play by Sheldon Williams that time. Get it was. Time. He got a piece of Collins shot. Reddick. No. And King with a rebound. And even on... Knocked away by Gordon, who came from behind and got a piece. And Virginia Tech has reacted pretty well all night long to Sheldon Williams getting the ball down low. Love. King tried to flop and get a, uh, get a charge that time, and he and Love collide again. Looks like some special teams. Yeah, it does. And somebody's going to get a forearm in a second. I can guarantee you that. Ewing on the way in. Foul before the shot. Help sort of gave up on it. Well, Dixon didn't come down far enough. He started, but he left the gap. 
Nice Kane drag. gets away. Nice dish. And then the block by Sheldon Williams. But then the follow by Dixon. Some great individual plays in that sequence. King is very aware as a football player playing basketball. He's got very good instincts. And by the end of this season, he probably will have his basketball shape intact. Nice move by Dockery, but couldn't get inside. Now Ewing will be fouled on the way in. Take a look at King right there. A nice job. And Carlos Dixon. Eddie makes it happen. All right, Dave, thanks very much. We have 11.08 to go here, and Duke on top by three. Virginia Tech refusing to go away. Ewing? Oh, close to five. Boy, it was. Finally got it into Dockery. It looks to Mike Krzyzewski for the play he wants. Mike Krzyzewski's had to call a lot more plays this year than he has in the last several. Tough runner for Dr. Shad McRandolph. Rebound blocked by Collins. Collins has just been sensational. Now Reddick with a steal going back the other way. What a play by Reddick. Does not get enough credit for his defense. Well, he was just lurking in the traffic right there. Side that pass up all the way. Not a real smart pass, particularly when you need a basket. You got to walk it up a little bit, not take the risk. Witherspoon checks in for the first time. Tough pass. King then got it to Collins. Well, I'm impressed by King, and I'm really impressed by Collins. Well, King playing his role. You always need guys that are blue guys yep. that bring everything together and make it stick. He's big blue. Collins knocks this one away from Williams. Talk about J.J. Reddick's anticipation. This is a savvy guy. He's just laying right there. Passer never saw him. And then he finishes on the other end, just barely. Now Reddick looking for that screen. Good step out by King, but he'll pick up the foul. That's his second. Second team all-conference as a tight end and also an academic first team performer in the ACC. 20 catches, six touchdowns for a very good football team. He looks like one of those red zone go-to guys. He's, yeah. he's been pretty good here passing himself. The lead is three. We're under ten. Reddick goes baseline, draws the foul. When you get late in the second half, the ball is going to be in J.J. Reddick's hands more often because they want to draw fouls and eventually send him to the free throw line. Well, you look at Reddick when he dips that shoulder and gets that arm out. That's what Seth Greenberg was telling us about before. He kind of wonders how they get away with it. A terrific defense again by Gordon, forced Ewing beyond the basket. Took him down to their baseline, didn't let him come back. Virginia Tech with a chance to tire, take the lead. This is Dixon. Gordon guarded by Dockery. Gordon trying to penetrate and can't. King, nice head fake, but couldn't get inside. Gordon with a hanger. And Ewing lost it out of bounds. Fresh 35 for Virginia Tech. Well, we talk about Jamon Gordon and his defense. Look at him right here. He's not going to allow him to turn the corner to the basket. Just forces him down baseline. Ewing still uses the athleticism to get back in line with the basket, but he was beyond the basket on that drive. Again, that's a defender pushing a guy where he wants to. Nice bounce pass to King. Uses his body to shield the ball. Gets the offensive rebound and draws the foul. Well, you have to hand it to Virginia Tech. They came into this game as the worst rebounding team in the ACC, averaging almost five rebounds a game less than their opponents. And they have just beaten Duke on the boards. Well, they've been battling. Again, you get guys getting themselves in position. King missed that shot, but he never left the spot. He just kept it alive until he finally had a chance to draw the foul. 
Melchioni was charged with that last foul. Bodies fly, loose ball. King tips it outside. Virginia Tech again with a basketball and out of the corner. It's Dixon. Are you kidding? They're on their feet in Blacksburg. It's spread enough, and Dixon had to recognize that. 14 Virginia Tech colonel. Duke has committed only eight. Williams against the triple team. Knocked out of bounds. Again, you talk about the will of J.J. Redick. He had to get there. Contact still falling to his knees right now. Shoulders still square. Redick again wants the same maneuver, then fades away short on the jumper. Still tied. 2.15 left. That time the switch with Gordon on Redick, a lot more difficult. Dowdell has not been much of an offensive factor. King. Jump hook. Got it. Are you kidding? I'll tell you what. Duke's risk didn't pay off. Sadler Grandall guarding Jeff King was leaving him to help double team. Trying to play five on four. King kept him honest. King having a career game showing no fear at all. Hokies by two. Sheldon Williams again. Looking where the double team might be coming from and makes a spectacular shot with the left hand. 16 for Williams. And again, there's the improvement by Sheldon Williams. Just four or five feet around the basket. That's all you need to be able to use that left hand. Man, what a great game this has been. There have been just one spectacular play after another. Dixon, baseline, missed the shot, following a foul. And who else? Collins came in to get the loose ball. A foul on Chandler Randolph. That's four on him. And you see Randolph in this particular play. Williams had to come help out on King because Randolph had left him. And Virginia Tech found him. But then Sheldon Williams with that left hand, using his body to ward Collins off. You know, that's a terrific post move inside. And, you know, practice makes perfect again. That's all Duke does in their warm-ups with their big guys and really get them focused on playing in there by running through those drills. Muscle memory carries them through. Collins missed a big free throw, then he misses another one. Jeff King has had a career-high seven points tonight. He had a career-high eight rebounds the first time these teams played. He has been terrific off the bench for Virginia Tech, which usually doesn't get anything, and I mean virtually anything, off the bench. And except for a couple of times when he turned it over, an ill-advised pass or whatever, he's been playing within his role. More college basketball on Saturday at noon. Undefeated Illinois against Iowa. Remember, Iowa took Illinois in overtime last month. That game subject to blackout in Illinois and Iowa. And then at night, Mississippi State at 9 o'clock against number three, Kentucky. Here's something else to watch in this game. Duke is dangerously thin. The last game they played, a loss against Maryland, they had five guys foul out. If this game goes to overtime, Duke puts itself in tremendous jeopardy. And here is the coaches poll. Duke eight this week. And third in the ACC. A game behind Wake in North Carolina. Tied at 62. Reddick. Look at the number of screens they set for him. Pull up. Reddick. Didn't get it. Big rebound. Under a minute to go. Well, Duke's going to get possession again. They're looking to try to play defense and make this stop. Dixon. Tipped it. What's it, Gordon? About four white shirts on that ball. A lot of guys claiming credit. The lead is two. Reddick for the lead. Got it. Holy cow. Duke by one. Dowdell. Got it. That's a three. Neither coach calling timeout. They don't want the defenses to get set. They've got enough firepower to create. Ewing. 
In and out. Fight for the rebound. Jump ball. Possession arrow gives it to Duke with 4.9 to go. Shavlik Randolph with a heck of a play to keep Duke alive. And now Mike Krzyzewski will take a timeout. The Hokies on the verge of an enormous upset. They are up by two. And Jamon Gordon looks like he's cramping up. It looks like it's loosening up, but you can see the balls in his muscle. He's just exhausted. He has been playing his heart out on both ends, as are just about everybody else on the floor. How the clutch are these buckets? I mean, it's unbelievable. Again, there's the tip, and actually it was Gordon. Yeah, it was Jamon Gordon. And then Reddick, like I said, he always believes no matter how many he misses, the next one's going in. And it usually does. And there you see Gordon again on that baseline, sneaking in underneath the big guys with the tip. It's been a remarkable effort on behalf of both teams. Now, if you're Duke, 4.9, are you thinking two, three, or just a good shot? Well, when you get a shooter like J.J. Redick and a guy like Daniel Ewing who are able to bust the three, you want to take what's available. You want to spread the floor. Obviously, Sheldon Williams is going to be the first option because you also have a chance to draw a foul with him down low. But if he gets doubled, you've got still enough time to kick it back out for that quick shot at the buzzer. And you've got to come out on Redick, and you still have to guard against him driving and fouling him because he's automatic from the line. On the inbounds, you got to take a look at Williams down low. But then you got Shavlik Randolph at the top. Look for him to scream down and grab somebody. And Seth Greenberg sees something and calls it 30 seconds. I've always thought this was fascinating. You see how the other team comes out on the court. Now you call a timeout. So the question for me as a fan has always been, well, why don't you just come back out in the same set? Because... You know, I mean, you've got five different ways you can come out. What's the coach going to do? Take one away? Well, also, it's about seeing which personnel is out there on the floor. You know, you're you're playing or coaching against the personnel as opposed to the play. They know just about every out-of-bounds right. play, unless Mike Krzyzewski makes something up there. And they've gone over it, but you look at the personnel and see where you can help, where you might not be able to help. Virginia Tech has not beaten a top-ten team in 20 years. 20. This could do it. They gave Williams the look. He didn't get it. Read it. Ewing to win it. No! Virginia Tech has done it. They have beaten Duke 67 to 65. people trying to keep 5,000 people from coming onto the court that doesn't work and how about Seth Greenberg you know you talk about them coming into the ACC the difficulty he might have in recruiting in the state of Virginia and throughout I'll tell you what you talk about a boost for this program probably the biggest win in a generation and it's got to be one of the happiest nights of his life here's the last shot Ewing with a great look well, they double-teamed J.J. Reddick, got the ball out of his hand, but that's like picking your poison because Daniel Ewing, an excellent shooter from beyond the arc, just couldn't get it to go down. A remarkable night for Seth Greenberg and Virginia Tech, a team that lost the first meeting between these teams 100-65 to 65 at Duke. Tonight, they don't lose it. They win it. 67 to 65 coming up college game night this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports for lenny elmore and our entire crew this